Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the lecture. Some good news, this is the last of our lecture for this semester today. Um, so today let's quickly go through um, one of the uh, application example, which is um, designing a active bandpass filter. Okay, so an active bandpass filter, what do you know? You know it has um, basically some active elements, which is going to be of M, right? And it's a bandpass filter, so technically it will have a, a center frequency or resonant frequency. Uh, then it also have a what is it called a bandwidth, okay? So here's the problem. Uh, so in the textbook, they give you a, a specification. So because this is a design a design example, so they will ask you to. Uh, figure out how to design a, um, a bandpass amplifier that has um, the center frequency at 2 kilohertz, the bandwidth to be pretty narrow around uh, at 10 hertz, and the maximum voltage gain to be at 40, at 40. Okay, so our approach here is that we're going to use this. Uh, three stage uh, bandpass filter configuration in here, and you're gonna make the assumption that all of the op aim are ideal in our circuit design. Okay, so after you have all of the specification, you have your approach, uh, now you go into the analysis. Okay, so first let's consider this op aim in here. Uh, with this op we can figure out its own voltage gain, which is the ratio between the VO2 and VO. And this is an inverting op configuration, so you're going to have VO2 over VO equal to negative, impedance of C over impedance of R2. To simplify all of the, uh, the, ex the expression, you can have uh, the final ratio to be uh, one, like negative 1 over SR2C. Then you do the same thing for this op amp in here. It's also an inverting op amp configuration. You're gonna have the ratio between VO3 over VO2. When you do that, you realize here you have R5. Over here, you also have R5. So R5 and R5 cancel out. It will yield you negative one. So now you uh, combine these two things that you just figured out. You have a ratio between V2 over VO, you have a uh, VO2 over VO, you have a ratio between um, VO3 over VO2. So when you combine these, you can actually figure out uh, a ratio between VO3 back to VO. So from here back to here, it's going to be 1 over SR2C. Okay, now let's consider this note number 1. Uh, let's apply. Uh, the first thing we you know that since uh, this um, this the, the positive terminal of the op amp is at is grounded right, and the voltage between and since this is ideal op amp, uh, this voltage will be approximately equal to this voltage. So at node one, the voltage right here will be at virtual ground. Therefore, if I apply KCA, which is k current law, at this node. Okay, that means if I sum this current and this current and this current and this current together, I will have zero. So then I can have first this current is going to be Vi minus zero because this is virtually, virtually at ground over R4. Okay, the next thing will be um, this current which is Vo over R1. Then I'm going to have Vo over uh, 1 over SC which is the impedance of C and finally I'm gonna have this current which is VO3 over R3 sum all of them up together I'll get 0 because of KCL so now I combine this equation and this equation together okay I can basically substitute VO3 for VO using this equation now I have the whole expression only in terms of VO and VI. Therefore, I can figure out the ratio between VO and VI. 
Okay, so the overall voltage gain will be my overall voltage gain will be uh, VO over VI equal to negative 1 over R4 over 1 plus 1 over R plus SC plus 1 over SR2R3C. So now if I substitute uh, S for J omega, I can pull out the J, then I can have, I can have, Yeah, I can have this term here. Um, okay, so the cent center frequency occurs uh, at the point where the imaginary term of the denominator becomes zero. So center frequency occurs when this whole thing becomes zero. So what I can do is I can basically set this to zero. So I can calculate my center frequency to be omega naught which is equal to 1 over C R2 uh, C times square root of R2 R3 or it's gonna be I can express that in terms of F also so F naught equal 1 over 2 pi C square root of R2 R3 from here um, I can figure out the maximum voltage gain at omega naught it's pretty easy just have to cross out this whole term because this is equal to 0 so the uh, AV max magnitude of AV max will be equal to uh, R R1 over uh, R1 over R4 and finally the bandwidth will be equal to uh, 1 over 2 pi R1C so we have done all the analysis we derive all of the uh, expression for the center frequency the maximum voltage gain and the bandwidth, which are our specification, right? So when we design, when we find, when we find all of those um, expression for the specification, now we can actually choose what component do we need uh, uh, for to for the for the specification to to meet what is asked. Uh, and now we're gonna go to the design process. So first. So our specification required to have a bandwidth of 10 hertz. Um, so first, let's just set uh, let's just, let's set our capacitor to a common number, which is 0 0.1 microfarad. Okay. So if we do so and we apply the expression for bandwidth, okay, which is equal to 10, we can derive our R1, which is this one. So we can have R1 will be equal to 159 kilo ohms. Also, the specification need to have a, a maximum voltage gain of 40. So we know the expression for maximum voltage gain equal to R1 over R4 equal 40, and we know R1 from previous, uh, so like from from BW from the bandwidth. So now we can figure out R4 to be 3.975 kilo ohms. So next, if we choose R3 to reset R2 and R3 to be equal, okay, yeah, then because it's actually a lot simpler to do it that way. If we do R2 and R3 to be equal, okay, then the center, uh, the center frequency will be uh, omega naught equal to 1 over 2 pi c r2 uh, and the specification need the frequency to be at 2 kilohertz so you can calculate that do you know that r2 will be equal r3 and equal to 795.8 ohms so the uh, ohms so when you uh, when you pick a number for r2 and r3 probably you just have to uh, compensate them so that the uh, Basically, the effect of R2 multiply R3 will be close to uh, this number square. Okay, now we have all of the calculation uh, done. We know the ideal case, what we need for all of the value. However, um, usually resistor value come in some standard set, right? So we have to pick some standard number. So first, uh, we will try to choose 
the component as close as possible to the design that we can. So we at first we choose C to be 0 0.1 microfarad, which is already a common number. R1, we choose it to be 160 kilo ohms. So for R2 and R3, it's a little bit tricky. You cannot just two them two choose two of them equal to each other. Okay, you want to actually choose two of them so that R2 multiply R3 will be as close as possible to uh, the, the calculation, the design calculation of R2 square because you're trying to design R2 multiplied by R3, things like that. Anyway, yeah, this is the reason why we don't choose it exactly the same, like one is a little bit lower, one a little bit higher. Okay, and finally R4. Uh, just choose as close as possible. R5, mm, you can choose anything for R5. Anything is good. I'll just go with the 1 kilo ohms because technically R5 and R5 cancel out. Uh, so we plug in off the number in the circuit. Pum, 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 pum. So what do we do next? We think, yeah, we're done, right? Uh, actually, not quite yet. So what we just did is we picked the component but we need to we need to do a little bit more of calculation to see how far off we are from the actual spec right so now we plug in off this that that number that we chose in the equation now we can see and this is the reason why we have to choose it differently because i want this number to be as close to like 159 square as possible uh, so we choose this number we plug it in and we see that okay I have a center frequency at 2.092 kilohertz which is pretty close to 2 kilohertz uh, requirement the bandwidth is 9.947 hertz also pretty close to 10 hertz and the uh, maximum voltage gain will be 41.03 not far from 40 so let's go specific. This is basically within the 1.5% of the spec. This is within the 0.53% of the spec, and this is within the 2.6%. So everything is pretty good so far, right? Uh, however, when you actually build a circuit, you have to take into account something. Each element that you choose in here actually it has its own tolerance, right? You know, like usually some resistor come in like a plus minus five percent variation. So those tolerance of variation will affect the actual spec of your circuit once you build it. Also, uh, you have to take it into account of your op amp because you make the assumption that the op amp are ideal, uh, which in some cases it's not. So um, you have to take those factors into account when you actually build the circuit in real life. Okay, what's next? There's not much next. We are at the end of our semester, so no more lecture. Um, thank you very much for being with, uh, uh, hang on in this uh, online class so far. Um, I hope you guys learned something out of this semester. Uh, I'm pretty sure some of you may have received like a survey from, from uh, the, the university to uh, evaluate the class. So please fill out the survey if you enjoy it. Please give some positive feedback uh, if you would love to improve in some way just let like fill out the survey uh, I will I will try to release uh, the final the tech home final exam on Wednesday and um, probably I will give you a week to complete that um, but otherwise that will be it for our semester uh, I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you guys uh, if you catch me on campus anywhere or if you have any question later, feel free to email and contact me. Okay, bye.